Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, historian of the ultra and the bizarre. And talking about historians and history, is there a more magical year to Americans than 1776? A more enchanted number? And yet, if you were a betting man way back then, you would have had to go with the overwhelming odds and back the British. Why not? The British had the men, they had the ships, they had the money, too. All that the Americans had were a few of what we now call the intangibles. But isn't that what life is all about? The intangibles? What's this about a ghost? I won't have it. General, I see him. I won't have sergeants who spread such ridiculous rumors. But General Washington, sir, the man has no head. A Hessian on horseback without a head. Sir, I fought under you when you was a colonel in the King's Virginia Militia. And I waited 17 years to serve under you again. And we've been under fire no less than five times together. That's why an old soldier like you should know better. I do know better. And I've seen him. This headless Hessian. That'll be all, Sergeant. This is... Yes, sir. General, a man was obviously drunk or deranged. No, Major Hamilton, I would wager my life on Sergeant Meadows. If he says he saw a headless Hessian, then depend on it, there is a headless Hessian. Our mystery drama, The Headless Hessian, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars... Lloyd Bachner. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicine, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Two hundred years ago, if you were a poor German peasant in the province of Hesse-Darmstadt, you could be drafted into the Landgrave's army, and your regiment could be sold to whatever foreign country could afford to buy it. Frederick II sold some soldiers to George III to put down a little disturbance in the American colonies. 22,000 troops for about $15 million in today's money, or some $730 per man which was just about the good going price for an able-bodied black slave, too. Well, along about December of 1776, there was a large detachment of Hessians stationed in Trenton, New Jersey. Their commanding officer was a certain Colonel Rawl. He was considered a good soldier, but he did have a certain weakness. And since you'd never guess what it is, I'll tell you. The Colonel was crazy about music played on the flute. Yes? I have here a note to the colonel from the captain of the guard. All right. Wait here. Yes? Ah, oh, it's the beautiful Peggy. A, a soldier brought you this note, sir. Hmm. To the commanding officer from the captain of the guard. Sir, the bearer of this note is the most accomplished flute player I have ever heard. I believe you would enjoy hearing it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I must see him at once. But Colonel, we must arrange for the disposition of the trenches. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I respectfully submit... Lieutenant Peel. Suppose the Americans attack. Suppose the Americans attack. Are you serious, Lieutenant? Colonel, it is possible. Yes, it's possible. It's possible for the sun to shine at midnight. It's possible for the Delaware River to turn into a foaming current of beer. But the American army is... This rabble that calls itself the American army no longer exists. Sir, General Washington has at least 40,000 men. This upstart militia colonel has been running like a whip dog across four rivers. The Hudson, the Hackensack, the Passaic, and the Delaware. He's now at bay. Sir, he is very dangerous and clever. My boy, you must believe this war is over. 
Your commander, Lord Cornwallis, plans to sail for England next month to report this fact to the king. Americans are still organized. They have spirit. Son, I promised your father I would make an officer and a gentleman out of you. The first requisite for success in a military career. Never contradict your superior. Even when I am right? Especially when you're right. Peggy. Bring in my flute player. Colonel, this Washington is wearing us down. Ah, oh, my hit. flute player. Well, sir, Private Heinrich Heinrich reporting. And where are you from, Heinrich? Augsburg, if it should please your excellency. Good country. I see you brought your flute. And so, present arms. A little tune from the home country, excellency. I obey, Your Excellency. Give him some money, Peel. <laughs> now, don't fish for pennies like some frugal Frenchman. Give him the handful. He's earned it. I thank Your Excellency. <laughs> Peggy, take him into the kitchen. The man must be hungry. This way. Good night, Your Excellency. Peggy. You fool, you fool. Ah, but I'm your fool, darling Peggy. Where did you get that uniform? You could be shot. See, you once again, it's worth it. Well, it's worth nothing of the kind. You've got to get out of here. After all the trouble I had getting in here, you want me to get out? Uh, when you knocked on the door, I, I said to myself, well, here's a Hessian that looks like Tom Caldwell. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. And then I watched you play. Ah, have I improved? Oh, yes, your tone is so much... Tom, stop it. <laughs> Do you want to be shot as a spy? Oh, now, wait. What does that walrus mean by my beautiful Peggy? Oh. He's all right. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, everybody says Mom and I are lucky the Hessian commander chose our house for his headquarters. Mm. We, well, we're protected against the riffraff, you know. How did you get here? Well, the governor called out the Jersey militia and attached us to Washington's army. Uh, I had to see you. But the army's across the Delaware. How did you get here? You have to ask that. You don't remember our secret place? <gasps> the fort. Yes. I borrowed a horse. But, Tom... What are you going to do? Well, I'd like to get married. Now? Yeah, well, we're going to have to wait a little while, but it, it'll be over soon. Oh, I don't think so. We won't win for a long time. We're not going to win at all. Tom. Oh, Peggy, you should see Washington's army. Half of them don't have uniforms or even blankets or shoes. Ain't hardly two weapons alike. There's shotguns, muskets, fowling pieces, a few rifles. I have faith in that army. Yeah, well, in a couple of three weeks, there isn't going to be any army. Most everybody's enlistments expired. Most everybody's gone home. Even you? Even me. Well... Peggy, we've only got one life. Let's live it. Let's be happy. Peggy! More wine! Oh, I, I've got to go back in there. You'd better get out of here, Tom. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, Tom, please, no. It's too dangerous. I love you, Peggy. How... How are you going to get back to our lines in that uniform? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything. Tom Caldwell has arrived and the situation is well in hand. Wake up, boys. Wake up. Oh. Sounds like somebody's coming on horseback. Oh. Stand by to challenge. Oh. Halt. Hold on fire. No. Mr. Jones. He ain't got no head. Good He's Lord. Good I'm getting out of here. Come on. Come on. Oh, Major Hamilton, what is this nonsense? General Washington, I don't know, but it's quite serious. We have enough problems. <sighs> well, I suppose not. There's always room for more. The men are terrified. The headless Hessian. What kind of child the saw him? The picket on the road leading to the river actually saw him. Now, there were others who saw him. They were all probably drunk. General, I would tend to agree. But where would they get the liquor? You must never underestimate the resourcefulness of the American soldier, Major Hamilton. How can I fault them? We're low on food, practically no blankets, and it's freezing. The sergeant in charge of the picket is outside, sir. I thought you'd like to see him. What I want to do is plan our attack on Trenton. 
which has to happen before the ice in the river freezes completely. General, he insists on seeing you. All right, Hamilton. Sergeant Meadows. Sergeant Meadows, Connecticut Brigade reporting, sir. Sergeant Meadows. Yes, I remember you. You helped me rally the men at the Battle of Long Island. If I had a couple of hundred more like you, we'd still be on the east bank of the Hudson River. Yes, sir. General Washington, yes, sir, we, we sure would. Now, what's this ghost story nonsense? It, it ain't nonsense. You're talking like a day-old recruit sergeant. I seen it, sir, with my own eyes. Seen what? The hesitation. As one old-timer to another, Sergeant, did you see him through the fumes? Sir, sir, help me, General. I ain't had a drop since we crossed the Hackensack River. Give me a detailed report. Well, sir, we was on picket duty, and, and we heard this horseman approach. So I stood up and I challenged him. Halt! But he, he don't halt. He only seems to, to ride faster. Well, sir, I, I brought my weapon to bear. I was about to shoot. And then I seen his face. Uh, what I mean is, he, he, he had no face. No head. No head. No, General. He was dressed in the uniform of a Hessian mercenary soldier. A and it was all complete. See, he didn't have his head. Since he had disobeyed your order to halt, why didn't you fire? Sir, if any other officer asked me that, I'd answer my foot was wet or, or the primer flashed in the pan or that I shot and missed. But you know what my answer is to you, General? You were scared out of your wits. Yes, sir. And I would have been scared, too. All right, Sergeant, that's all. Right. General Washington, I did see him. The, the four men with me, they seen him, too. He was a headless hatchet. Thank you, Sergeant. Report back to your unit. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, this is all we need, Major Hamilton. You can get men to fight when they're hungry, tired, cold, but not when they're scared of a ghost. But there's no such thing as a ghost, General. Hamilton, you're an intelligent man. I think you're the most intelligent man in the whole army. But don't let your intelligence get in the way of the facts. The fact here is there's a ghost, or what the men think is a ghost, and that's the same thing. <laughs> It's him! The headless head! Oh, no. no. That's the fifth night in a row, Major Hamilton. Yes, General. They see this thing coming. Why can't they shoot it? Well, they say they just freeze. Hamilton, how do you account for it? I... I don't know. Maybe there is a headless head. Major, I'm surprised at you. I know you should be, this but I... This thing is destroying the morale of our forces. I want to attack Trenton no later than Christmas. We have to win the battle. We have to do something to make the people believe we can win this war. Could... Could it be a trick? Could the enemy be using this as a way to frighten our men? Well, I can't think of a better answer. Now, you tell me he comes down the north road from the river, which is something I don't understand. The men expect him. Why can't they shoot? I can't explain, General. Just something happens, that's all. You get that chill running down your backbone and that icy fear like a cold hand clasped around your heart. Sergeant, I understand your term of service expires next week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hope you'll set a good example to the rest of your unit by re-enlisting. Oh. Come, Sergeant, you know we simply can't afford to lose trained men like you and your comrades. Oh, General, we ain't afraid of nothing that lives. It's what's dead that scares us. We, we just can't fight the supernatural. Sergeant, suppose we end the career of this headless Hessian. How are you going to do that? I said suppose. Well, in that case, General, I... Let us exchange promises, Sergeant. I shall promise you that the headless Hessian will ride no more. And you must promise me to re-enlist. General, it's done. Forward, Major Hamilton. General, you made that man a promise. I know, Hamilton. 
That means we will have to end the night riding of that notorious headless Hessian. I'm aware of that. Does the general have any idea how it's to be done? Not at this time, Major Hamilton. I... I don't... Yes, Major. Now, no, there's something on your mind. Say it. Sir, I just couldn't believe you would ever make a promise you couldn't keep. Oh, I intend to keep it. You just said you didn't even know but how. I have till midnight to think of something. Suppose we start thinking. <laughs> There is a legend about George Washington that he never told a lie. And although it's become fashionable to strip our heroes down to more human proportions, the fact is, the Washington legend remains surprisingly intact. And he has every intention of keeping this promise. He has to. All I intend to promise you is that I shall return in a few moments with Act Two. As if General George Washington doesn't have enough tangible obstacles to contend with, a scarcity of food, arms, ammunition, and equipment, he has now, in addition, a supernatural problem. Terrorizing the camp is a headless Hessian horseman who is seen riding about almost every night. And unless this apparition is speedily dismounted and disposed of, it doesn't look as if there will be a flood of re-enlistments at this most crucial hour. I am thinking, General, but nothing occurs to me. Whoever he is, he's flesh and blood, and he can stop a bullet. And so I know what we have to do. Yes, sir. Well, who's making that very pretty music? Uh, don't let me interrupt you, soldier. Uh, Private Tom Caldwell, New Jersey Brigade, sir. You're an expert flute player. Well, thank you, sir. I'm quite fond of music myself. Yes, General, so they say. Really? What do they say? Well, they say you sing a perfect harmony. We'll have to arrange for a musical evening once we have the British on the run. Yes, sir. And what do you think of this headless Hessian soldier? Well, sir, how can there be a headless anybody? Correct. I hope you can convince your friends. There's a straight-thinking young man for you, Hamilton. We need more like him. Sir, what is your plan for dismounting this headless Hessian? We know he comes from the direction of Trenton, do we not? Yes, sir. We know the time to be about midnight. Yes. The men on picket duty find themselves unable to shoot at him, isn't that so? True. But tonight, we shall have special squads of men who are not afraid to fire. May I volunteer to command one of those squads? Certainly, Hamilton. And ask Lieutenant Monroe to volunteer to command another. <laughs> Anderson. Yes, give him some money, Lieutenant P. <laughs> Here you are. Uh, now, Colonel, please listen to me. The fortified place. There will be no fortified places. It's not necessary. Soldier, why are you standing there? Leave. Go in the kitchen, Reinemuth, and have something to eat and drink. Thank you, Your Excellency. At least, Colonel, if British headquarters asks about fortifications, let us be able to say that we all are... All right, all right, all right. Show me where you want the holes to be done. All right, Emma, sir. Uh, you must report here tomorrow. It's Christmas Eve. Yes, sir. Tom. Well, don't I get a kiss? You have to stop doing this. Uh, you're right, darling. No, I mean it. Well, so do I. I'm going to desert. Tom. Oh, just about half the army, it seems like, deserts every day. D -d darling, it's over. But Washington says if he has to, he'll retire to the mountains and fight from there. Peggy, all I ever wanted was to make hay on my farm, make music on my flute, and, and make love to you. I don't need any revolution for that. Tom, I just can't think of you as a coward. Oh, try another word. Try prudent. Prudent. This harebrained thing you're doing now, that's prudent. You 
You're risking your life every minute. Well, it's all right. At least I'm risking my life for me. I'll see you tomorrow. No, Tom. If you come back, I... I'll leave here. But, sweetheart... It's crazy. It can only end with your getting yourself killed one way or the other. By one side or the other. Well, maybe... I want us to get married. Somehow, we both have to live through this war, and crazy people won't survive. Tom, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Peggy. You've got to grow up. You know what I mean. Exactly. I don't need a few nights like this. I need the rest of our lives. Promise me, Tom. Promise me. You won't come here again until it's really safe. But Peg, promise. I promise. Your men have their orders? Yes, General. I want this man taken... I prefer to have him alive, but if he insists, then we'll have to take him dead. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Tomorrow night is Christmas Eve. The enemy will be celebrating. We can have the advantage of surprise. If only we can capture this headless Hessian, our men will have the enthusiasm for a fight. Major Hamilton, Lieutenant McGraw, you must put a stop to him. There. Major Hamilton, Lieutenant Monroe, and two squads. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I recognize you, sir. Any sign of it. Not yet, Major Hamilton. Oh, he comes this way all the time. Oh, when he comes. Monroe, we might as well deploy our men along the road. Out of sight, then. Get among the trees. Now, I want it quiet. No one is to make a sound. Listen. It's him, sir. It's him. Headless Hessian. Don't get out of here. Don't anyone move. Hold still. Hold still. Challenge him, sir. Stand back. I'll do it myself. Halt. Halt or I'll fire. Halt. Let him have it. Fire. Fire. What's wrong with you, man? I'm all froze up, Major. Fool, hand me a rifle. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry, sir. What are you standing here for? Ask him. I fired. Lieutenant Monroe fired. Then I grabbed the sergeant's rifle and fired again, but he was gone. And there was no sign of him? We had 20 men. If everyone had fired... Well, some we... shots were fired and everyone heard them. And now I'm afraid it'll get worse. Worse, General? How? We may have begun a legend of an invincible and bulletproof headless Hessian. I'm sorry, sir. I'll go out there myself next time. Somebody has to bring him down. Come in. Uh, Sergeant Meadows reporting, sir. Yes, Meadows. Sir, I, I'm sorry about last night. I, I... What is it, then? What have you got there? Uh, it's a flute. Uh, yes, General. Where did you get it? Well, when we went chasing after the headless station, I happened to notice something lying along the side of the road. And I stopped and picked it up. A flute? Well, what would a flute... Such... Sergeant, take a squad, go over to the New Jersey hutments, and arrest a man named Tom Caldwell, and also search all his belongings. But, General, I, I, I don't understand. Don't you? Uh, no, sir. How do you account for this Hessian uniform? That uniform? Uh, well, General Washington, I, I, I never saw that thing before in all my life. It was found in the bottom of your kit. Well, m maybe someone put it there as a, as a joke. That's right. You, you know how fellas are. We, we have some great jokers in the outfit. And the money? Money? These are silver kroner. You can see they come from Hess Darmstadt. Now, soldier, where would you come into possession of Hessian money? Oh, um, uh, that. Well, it, it was in the skirmish, sir. Uh, the, the skirmish we had three weeks ago, and this one was lying there dead, and I, I looked through his pockets. That ain't a crime, is it? And uh, that's how I uh, come to get it. And your flute. What was it doing lying by the side of the road? So that's what happened to it. I, I knew I lost it someplace. Don't you want to tell the truth, soldier? For the good of your soul? Uh, for, for the good of my soul? General, when you talk like that, it means you're going to hang me. You performed a treasonous act for the enemy, soldier. No, it, it wasn't treason. It wasn't. You deny you were paid 
Now, here's the money. I told you how I got a it. A common soldier wouldn't have so much money. He, he was an officer. Soldier, your only hope is the truth. You, you wouldn't believe it. And why wouldn't I believe it? Because you'd have to be crazy like me. Well, many people have called me crazy. Sir, I've, I've got this girl. She lives in Trenton. Her name is Margaret. Peggy Mason. Yes? Well, I just had to see her. I, I had to. You can understand that, General, can't you? Yes. So I, uh... Well, well, I couldn't go there in civilian clothes, could I? So I picked up this Hessian uniform. The coat's kind of big, and I just put the top of it up over my head so it would look like I was, um, headless. Yes, sir. Headless. And that would get me past our picket. You say the girl's name is Peggy Mason. Major Hamilton, why is the name Mason familiar? The Hessian commander is headquartered in the Mason house. Of course. You mean to tell me that you actually risk going to the enemy headquarters? Yes, sir. But as a Hessian soldier, you would have to speak German. Yes, sir, but when I was a very small boy, I was bound out to this German farmer, and I learned how to speak in Deutsch uh, really good. Even so, how could you get into the colonel's headquarters? Well, sir, I knew something about this Colonel Rawl. The colonel, he's a fool for flute music, and so... Now, let me understand this. You went to the headquarters, played the flute for Colonel Rawl. Yes, sir, and he appreciated it so much, he gave me money. Uh, the money you found. And then afterward, you found an opportunity to spend some time with your girl. Oh, yes, sir. I was always able to find time for that. Weren't you afraid you'd be shot coming back? Well, sir, I figured everyone would be too scared to shoot at me. And I was right until last night. I heard them shots, and I was so scared, I just dropped my flute. I, I couldn't stop to look for it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, well, sir, that's about it. I don't think it's worth my getting shot. Oh, you wouldn't be shot in any of it. The penalty for treason is death by hanging. General, please, the way I see it, the worst I did was to be absent without leave. Very well, soldier. We listened to your fairy tale. Now, suppose you tell us the truth. Major, that was the truth. Every single word was the truth. Sergeant, take the prisoner outside. Yeah, please, sir. You ain't going to hang me. Prisoner, stand at attention. About face. Forward, part. Yeah, yeah, please, General. General Washington, don't order them to hang me. <laughs> Admittedly, it would be better if Tom had a more convincing story. We know Tom is telling the truth, but unfortunately, our testimony will have no way of making itself felt. His fate, at this point, rests with General Washington. His only hope is that Washington, who is a completely truthful person, may be able to discern the truth in others. You only have a few moments to wait for my inevitable return with Act Three. The ride of the headless Hessian has come to an end. He is neither headless nor a Hessian. He is Tom Caldwell, a New Jersey infantryman who is only trying to visit his girl inside the British lines at Trenton. And he has been discovered and in grave danger of being dispatched as a traitor. The decision is up to the commander-in-chief. General, you have the right to order him executed. Or would you prefer to assemble a court-martial? A court-martial? Major Hamilton, they would hang him. But the man deserves to be hanged. No one deserves to be hanged. We only use the rope because we're unable to think of a truly fitting punishment. You must admit he tells quite a story. An unbelievable story. I don't know about that. I think I believe him. But the story makes no sense. Hamilton, you are an extremely intelligent and logical man. But you mustn't let it ruin your common sense. But, sir, I... How old are you? Twenty-nine. And how old do you suppose that soldier is? Twenty-two, twenty-three. And I am forty-four. Now, why do I understand that boy better than you do? General, I understand he is a traitor. Oh, come, Hamilton. He's in love. Love? Yes, he's in love. 
the way only a young man can be in love. He's not only in love with her, but he's in love with love itself. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but I'm afraid I don't follow. Well, maybe you will one day, and you'll be a better man for it. It's more than the girl. It's the adventure, the danger. He risks his life every time he sees her. He can be captured by the Hessians and hanged. He could be captured or shot by his own side as well. <laughs> can a young man ask for more? Well, what do you propose to do with him? He deserves a medal. <laughs> General! Oh, don't, don't be alarmed. I shall do the proper thing and take an extremely dim view of the situation. Bring him back here. Sergeant, the prisoner. Soldier, I believe your story. Oh, thank you, General. I, I knew you would. Everyone says General Washington, he's the fairest man that in the That doesn't whole... mean you're innocent. Uh, no, sir, no. I'm sure I'm guilty of something, but nothing that would call for a rope now, would it? Being absent without leave, frightening the soldiers of the United States Army. Well, sir, grown men being scared of a ghost, uh, we wouldn't want that to get around. Silence, it's not for you to justify your misdeeds. And, uh, no, no, sir. Therefore, you will continue in your present course of action. My witch, sir? You will continue to ride to Trenton in the guise of a Hessian soldier. At least for one more night. Tonight, to be exact. But I, I, I don't want to get shot at coming back. You won't be coming back. I won't. No one is coming back. Tonight, we shall take Trenton. But, but, but I promised my girl I would... You've been traveling there on a more or less regular basis. You must be aware of the location of the fortifications. The fortifications? The earthworks, the trenches, the strong points. Oh, oh damn. Uh, well, to tell you the truth, there ain't none. <laughs> a soldier, that's impossible. No, no, General. Well, there just ain't no fortifications. It is incredible that the Hessian commander would leave the town unfortified. Well, he couldn't violate the most elementary rule of warfare. Now, think carefully, soldier. There must be an outpost. Oh, yeah, an outpost. Yeah, that's just as you cross the river on the main road. And there must be a fortification of some sort for them to fall back on. No, sir, there ain't. Well, I know it's been dark every time you've been there, but... Try to remember. I remember. There's this Colonel Rawl. He's the commander, see, and he don't want to build no fortifications. He doesn't? He, no, sir. And furthermore, he says, uh, uh, begging your pardon, that the American army ain't going to be able to attack. You heard him say that? Yes, sir. He says uh, to this uh, Lieutenant Peel, who keeps begging him to build up the defenses. And why does he say that? Well, because he says the American army is just a rabble that no longer exists. Is that what he said? Yes, sir, and... Uh, also, that General Washington is only an upstart militia colonel who's already run like a whip dog across four rivers. I'm only saying what he said, sir. That's quite all right. But Lieutenant Peel don't think so. He thinks you're dangerous and clever. Thank you. Now, soldier, every man in the army has a mission for tonight. Yours will be to go into Trenton dressed as a Hessian. I want you to entertain Colonel Rawl. Entertain him as long as you can. Now, Colonel, I would suggest a fortified position here on this rise, which commands... Yes, yes, an excellent idea. Also, a line of trenches. I, I agree. I want your authority to order this work done. You have it. I mean to have it done immediately. At once, sir. Tonight? Within the hour. For it's Christmas. There is no Christmas during war. Now, my boy, zeal is a commendable quality. Colonel, I must... Work your men as hard as you must. Work them to death if you have to. But never work them needlessly for no real purpose. I understand, but Look you... Look about you. It's snowing, freezing. The Delaware separates us from the Americans. Do you mean Washington would attempt to cross the river on such a night? He would attempt anything. Oh, but how could anyone get boats across in this weather? Oh, he has a detachment of fishermen from the city of Gloucester in Massachusetts. 
these men are skilled with boats. Fishermen and farmers and loudmouth lawyers. This is all these Yankees are. Why do they frighten you? I am not frightened. I what just... will you do if you ever have to fight against real soldiers? Colonel, I am... I know, I know, but don't get yourself a reputation for being overcautious. Some people might mistake it for cowardice. <sighs> yes, sir. We are to have a party at headquarters this evening. Private Ryan will throw play as usual. Yes, sir. And by the way, he deserves a reward. You give him money every time. He deserves more. Have him entered as a corporal. Because he plays a flute? It's as good a reason as any. Uh, better than most. Why did you come back tonight? I wanted to see you. But you promised. Peggy, sweetheart, I couldn't keep away. Oh, I'm really scared. Of what? Something's going to go wrong. I know it. I I just know it. And I thought we understood that... Now, Peggy, everything's going to be all right. I swear to you. Please, Tom, you're crazy to do this just for me. Well, I'm not doing it just for you. You're not? No, ma'am. Now, now you you got to cross your heart and hope to die never to breathe a living word. Yeah? But... I'm here on official business. Official business? From whom? Shh. General Washington. General Washington. Shh. You ain't supposed to breathe a word. Well, I like that. And here all this time, I thought you were doing it just for me. Well, I I am. I'm just combining business and uh, pleasure. Rydermuth? Where's Rydermuth? Rydermuth? They're calling me, sweetheart. I, I've got to go in there now. please be careful. What could go wrong? Quiet, everyone, quiet. We shall now listen to our genius of the flute, our own Heinrich Reinemuth from Aldersburg. <laughs> Beautiful Aldersburg. Heinrich, we are in your hands. Thank you, sir. Oh, don't thank me yet. Wait. Wait till you see how I intend to reward you. Bill? Bill? Well, look at Bill. Bill? Yes, sir. Well, close the door. We'll freeze to death. You missed the music. Heinrich was superb. Now, did you attend to that little matter, Colonel? Heinrich's promotion. Oh, that, sir. It cannot be done. Who says it cannot be done? We cannot promote Reinemuth to corporal for the reason that there is no Heinrich Reinemuth on the roster of this regiment. That's impossible. Don't let him get away. What did you just say, Lieutenant? There is no Heinrich Reinemuth. But that's impossible. He's standing here in front of us. Private Reinemuth, your paper, please. Well? Gentlemen, just where, Private Reinemuth, is the town of Aldersburg? Where? I have spoken to the men from every corner of Hestamstead. No one has ever heard of it. Well, it's, um... It is in your head! Reinemuth, who are you? He is a spy! Is this true, Reinemuth? No, sir, it, it's not true, e exactly. Are you a soldier in the American army? It doesn't matter. Even if he is a civilian, he is wearing a uniform. We must presume he is a spy. Did you come here to spy on us, Reinemuth? No, sir. Then why did you come? Colonel, I heard you were very fond of music, and anybody who loves the flute is a friend of mine. Why but... did you come here? Because I knew my music would make you happy. Let us hang him at once. Colonel, don't you believe me? Yes. Yes, I believe you. Oh. Sir, how could you believe such a story? It doesn't make sense. It makes sense to me. Does that mean this man goes free? Oh, no. He cannot go free. But, 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 but I wasn't here to spy. You are in uniform. Well, you wouldn't hang me to that. Oh, but we will shoot you. Tom! Tom! Oh, please, Colonel. My dear young lady, what are you doing here? He didn't mean any harm. Perhaps, but the law is the law. No! Let's take him outside. Goodbye, Peggy. No, no, I won't let him. Hoffman, Schneider, please. Restrain our good hostess. Oh. Gently. Oh, please, Colonel. Prisoner, stand at attention. Forward, march. Squad, halt. Oh. Here is as fine a spot as any, and you can be buried under this beautiful old oak tree. Does that suit you? Well, I don't have a choice, do I? I, I mean, I, I, do I have to get shot? Yes. 
Well, I, I like this place. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't like it. Uh, Do you have any last words? Yeah, I was hoping you might have some last words, like maybe reprieve. Form the firing party. You have no last words. No, sir. Uh, get it over with. Do you suppose you could play us a song? I would appreciate it. Yes, sir. Halt. Pass the word. Halt. 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 What do you make of that music, Hamilton? It must be our man. What's he doing out in the cold? Pass the word to move up slowly. Move up. Lieutenant Peel, command the firing party. Firing party! Ready! Aim! Fire! The Americans! The Americans! Don't shoot me! Don't shoot me! I'm an American! I'm an Fortunately, Tom escaped the hail of bullets, and he survived the Battle of Trenton, which every student of history knows was a great and glorious victory. And it came at an extremely crucial time. When the war was over, Tom married Peggy Mason and made music even sweeter than before. I'll tell you what happened to all of the other people as soon as I return, which will be immediately after these messages. the story true? My goodness, when you think of all the fables, past and present, that people swallow without question, why should I be compelled to provide documentary evidence? There was a General George Washington. There was an Alexander Hamilton. There was a Battle of Trenton, and we won it. The Hessian commander was a Colonel Wall. He was killed in the first fusillade. And he was a fanatic lover of the flute. And we know this because it appears in the diary of a Lieutenant Peel, who was his adjutant. Tom and Peggy, well, uh, we have to have some license, don't we? And we use it here seven times each week. Our cast included Lloyd Bachner, Jack Grimes, Marriott Hartley, Casey Kasem, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>